Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves once again speaking to an ancient frauditor in this particular case because he claims to be from the Prohibition era. I mean, come on now, you can't be that old. You'd be, what, uh, 200 years old by this point? But in all due seriousness, this old-timey frauditor seems to have a dislike for the modern frauditor movement. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy what this old fart has to say. Hey everyone, as promised, Lo Chi here from A Tiny Bit of Fun. I have with me today for part two of the world, world's oldest frauditor. And here he is. Well, hello, good citizen. I'm glad you could have, I'm glad you could come back. And I see you've got someone in your arms. Yes, it's good to be back here for another interview. And uh, I heard this little guy's name is Tiny. Yeah, his and name. Yeah, his he name seems is Tiny. Like a really nice. He's really good talking. Yes, he is. Say hi to everybody, Tiny. Yeah, yeah. his name's his name's Tiny, and he yeah. has his own little YouTube channel, Little yeah. Chihuahua Big World. He's a good doggy. Can I take him back with me? No, I think he needs uh, to stay here with me. Uh, all right. But you can come visit him anytime you want. Okay, Bubba. Here we go. Okay. Okay, now back to to part two. So how have things been going with you, good citizen, since we last talked? Yeah, man, it's been going good. I'm a bundle of energy now. Ah, so you got some good rest, yeah, huh? Got some good rest. I've been drinking a whole bottle of Geritol every day. Oh, boy. <laughs> I am filled with iron. Yeah. Oh, good, good. Yes. Okay, so now back to what we were talking about in part one. What were we talking about? Okay. Oh, never mind. I remember now. <laughs> See, this Geritol even helps with your memory power, too. <laughs> I hope it does, because I might need it whenever I get older. Okay, yeah. so, but yeah, you were talking about, close to the end of part one, you were telling everyone to remember, there's no expectation of privacy in public. That's right. Always remember that. Always yeah. remember. Well, good citizen, though, one thing is, um, if you're asked not to record, I would think you would have to respect that. Yeah, and that's the reason why a lot of frauditors get uh, trespassed and kicked out of uh, government buildings and post offices and everything like that, because they have no respect for anybody else besides themselves and other auditors. To a frauditor, it's like this. Rights for me and not for thee. Well, back then we did. Back then we did. You know? did. Yeah. When someone requested they didn't want to be filmed, we just turned the camera the other way. Well, but now they don't do that. They push the camera on people. I noticed that. I've been watching a few of these anti frauditor channels, and there are some good ones out there, by the way. Oh, yes. And they've been featuring a lot of these jerks who will go into a public building, or they'll even go into a restaurant. I was watching one, this little clown, he stands outside a restaurant where people have tables and chairs where they can sit outside on the sidewalk and enjoy their meal. And this little jerk wad, he just goes ahead and films them despite how they think. I know exactly That's who you're wrong. talking about. And oh, yes. you do? Yes, I do. Uh, I'm not going to say his name, but yeah. 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 He sounds like what we used to call Pennyway. Oh, I can't believe you're saying that about a fellow auditor. 
Well, I've been watching a lot of these channels, and I've been watching how they, these frauditors, I'm not going to call them auditors. They're wow. Frauditors. Okay. The way they go out and treat the general public, even, even people working in the private sector are getting pummeled by these idiots. Yeah, it's because mostly they don't have any job prospects or anything like that. I mean, they're unemployable because of their attitude problems or their criminal records or anything like that. I mean, who wants to hire somebody like that who's going to drive away your business and your customers and everything like that? I certainly wouldn't. Now, back in my day, mm -hmm. when we were going to go and film somebody, it was somebody working for law enforcement. Okay. Back then, they were dubbed the untouchables. Okay. That was way back during the time of Prohibition. Okay. Yeah. So, so and, what kind uh, of camera did you use for that time period? Oh, I know. I know what you got. In fact, I ended up finding it on eBay just a little while ago, and I'm sure you want to go back and get it at some point, because you probably left some incriminating film in there at some point, so you might want to go back, yeah, for sure. Go ahead and go back and get it before somebody finds that and uh, turns you in for what you did. Back then, you know, Thomas Edison was the first one to invent what they called back then the old flicker show. Yeah, I've heard they called that. And it used 16 millimeter film. Oh, wow. Didn't have sound to it. They didn't have what was called the microphone back then. Okay. And so they were called silent shorts. So we would go and we'd go find, we'd go find one of the detectives or we'd go find one of the revenueers back in the day. And, you know, we'd prop up and we'd, we do just like that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And that sounds interesting. We would just film them. So and then we would they would be presented in the movie theater as silent shorts to entertain the people. Okay, so back to what Kind of like the next subject I was going to bring up. So you earned money because people would go to the movies to watch the movie. You would get some money, too, from them showing your silent short. So, oh, gosh, yeah. So you're just like the auditors now. Yes, kind of. I don't think it's kind of. I think it is because you'd be getting money from them. You got money mm -hmm. from them. Yeah, but from what I've been seeing here lately, we wouldn't have done that. We would they're calling it e begging now. Yeah. We wouldn't have done that. We would have earned every penny. Uh-huh. That's right. So you're telling me that while you were doing this you had an actual job too? I did. I did. I worked Wait a second. You were a frauditor? And you had an actual job? I'm sure you uh, were working in some warehouse somewhere, listening to Big Rock Candy Mountain on the uh, radio or something like that, you lazy frauditor. At a dairy plant. Oh, really? And I did just about everything under the sun. Oh, okay. Okay. And so... When I retired, I finished. Re I finished up as a truck driver. Oh! Oh! Wow! I drove, I drove nights and delivered product all over the place. Okay. Well, now, so when did you find the time, and and during what time would you do your frauds? And I'm sorry, I'm not going to clean it up. I'm calling it a fraud because that's what you were doing. That's right. You know, there's no saying. Call a spade a spade. Yeah. 
And that's what that is. That's all it is now is fraudulent. Wow, that's strange. That, so, that's that's refreshing coming from a retired. <laughs> that's right. From an old frauditor. I did my frauditing on weekends. Oh, on okay. My time, because I couldn't afford to lose sleep. True. Well, that's very true. You got to have all the sleep you can in order to drive a truck safely at night. And safely deliver products. Uh huh. That's right. So I got a question for you. Okay, what's that? How much am I gonna stand to make off of these? Well, now, Mister Citizen, I'm not monetized on any of my channels. I'm not monetized. I don't have the watch hours or the subs. So. Say what? I, with YouTube, you don't. You have to have so many watch hours and so many subs before you get monetized. And I'm not close to that on, a, on either one of my channels. Well, I got an answer for that. What people? If you like these videos, get them out there. Hit that like button that's on there. And share, share, share with everybody. Uh, well, thank you, I good bet Susan. You that will help you out. Well, thank you, good Susan. That really helps a lot. A little longer than a few minutes later. So, would you be wanting to do a audit now, knowing what you know about the community that you're not with anymore? But would you want to try to go back in the? Fr to Friday? You know what? I'd love to do that again, only this time it's going to be audit to audit. That's right. Get up. Okay, I'm sorry I had to stop for a second. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, I'd like to get out there with my gimbal and my cell phone that I use and go find a frauditor. I'll get me a scanner and I'll listen to police traffic and I'll just take a guess on Ah, that's where they're gonna be at. Uh-huh. And get over there and set up shop a little ways from them. Make them think that I'm recording the police, but I'm not, I'm recording them. I think it's time to hold the frauditors accountable. Well, I got a question for you. Uh, how are you going to hold somebody accountable when they themselves don't be actually believe in accountability themselves? Because the actions they take all day, every day, and the arrests they've taken and everything like that, their criminal records, they don't exactly believe in accountability themselves because they don't hold themselves personally accountable for their own actions throughout their life. In fact, they try to blame others for their own faults. Pretty much a huge character flaw right there. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Old Fart Frauditor? Boy, you were so disappointed actually. with them, aren't you? I'm pissed at them. Oh, uh, hey, they, join the rest of us. We're, they got we're totally peeled. away from this mess. Yeah, they have. That is totally and true. they're getting away with too much crap. Yeah, I know. So... But anyway, Will, um, maybe we could continue this in the part three, if you would like. Right. Yeah. You like that, huh? Awesome. Yeah. Why not? Okay, Will, maybe we can talk about more about what you used to do in the auditing community whenever you were younger. Yeah, that's right. We could do that, and we can talk about talk some more about all of the wickedness going on in this country with these fools and their cameras and all that other crap. I would like to do that. I would all like to right. do that. Yeah, I would certainly love to hear the stories of those ancient frauditors from the uh, 
Prohibition era who went out annoying everybody in sight and everything like that. I mean, and sure, you got some interesting stories to hear, so please do tell them and entertain us all from your experience with these ancient frauditors. So, at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that?